Hello and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mows. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a little look at a Crowcast lawnmower with a Briggs and Stratton overhead valve engine on top. The one with the plastic carburetor. I'm not a fan of these, I must admit. Um, whenever I've cleaned them, I just don't have as much success as the old fashioned bowl style carburetors. I end up normally buying new carburetors for these, and uh, the copy ones are, are no better than, the, than a broken one. So it always pays to pay uh, out for a genuine one, but they're around £30, 30 pounds, somewhere in there, so it's a lot of money to take out for profit. <coughs> but hopefully, we'll. Um, We'll have a clean on this carburetor anyway and see what happens. What we've done so far is just pull some petrol into the um, tank because it had no fuel in it, give it a couple of pumps and it fired and, and that's it. It hasn't actually even tried to run or anything like that at all. It's just literally just fired up, boom, and then stopped. If this is the first time you're watching Mixed Mars, hit the subscribe button, whack the old bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told that when I've done a video or two on my Saturday night weekly live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty. Let's check out this Crowcast lawnmower. Right, here it is. As I say, the first thing I've done is just taken the um, the spark plug out. I had no spares of these. I've got all the other ones, but no spares of these. I need to get some in. This has got a Champion um, QC12 um, YC uh, plug in it. It was absolutely black as your hat. Um, sorry about the noise in behind. Someone's got a chainsaw working behind me, which uh, I love the sound of old engines, but uh, there you go, that's what it is. Um, also, I have noticed this isn't actually um, priming this carburetor to a degree. Not a lot of fuel coming through. Bits and pieces, but it's not priming as it should do. So the first thing I want to do is take this carburetor off, um, only because there's so much oil and stuff here that's causing an issue, and I can't I can't see it priming or doing anything. So I need to investigate the reason why. The air filter cap comes off very simply, uh, just by pulling it out, and it's absolutely filthy. And then the air box cover just held on by two little brackets at the bottom, pushes up like so. And all we do just to undo it once you get it on. That on, yeah. Once you get it on, it just clips over this little tiny clip like so. You just lift the tab up and remove it like so. Um, but that one's cleaning up on what have you, so I put that to one side out of the way. Um, to remove these, Briggs and Stratton went went above and beyond as far as I'm concerned. They didn't need to make it as anywhere near as difficult for these. And number one, I wish they didn't change the um change the old uh, carburetors. I wish they kept the old fashioned um, bowl style carburetors or something like that. You know, the metal ones because these just literally just don't do it. You want about an eight mil to remove two of the bolts. There's one there, and there'd be another one. There's four in total, two there, two there, one over here. Drop one. It's a weekend, so we've got, we've got kids, uh, not weekends, half term, so we've got kids and what have you all playing. Now you've got to change sockets now because that um, eight mil won't, won't cut it. And I'll drop it down to a seven mil to remove the other two, which are plastic threaded screws. One there, one down here. Give that old chainsaw some beans. That then will enable you just to lift out the, uh, the carburetor uh, housing and then remove the uh, crankcase, crankcase breather. There's lots of fuel in there. I can, I can just smell stale fuel. So I'm guessing this carburetor is uh, having uh, having issues. So let's try and clamp off that fuel. That's quite a thick line that is, and my forceps will struggle. So I've got a pair of um, flat flat ones that I use for ones like this. Let's clamp that off. Like so. And then you want a pair of normal pliers to remove the fuel line off of the carburetor. Yeah, a pair of normal pliers, but that removes a clamp. And then change over to a set of long nose pliers to actually remove the fuel line off of the uh, carburetor. Now these are quite tricky, because you don't get a lot of bend play in these. Get a bit of a twist first, Mick. And you've got to just sort of try and prise it all off with a tank at the same time so it's a bit of a pickle but you can manage it that's a fuel line now disconnected now you do have to um you can pull the carburetor out slightly it will come it comes off the old intake tube and then you just literally tip the carburetor around like so and then there's your carburetor okay 
The number one rule with these I have found is you do not use any type of carb spray because this gasket will just expand and that uh, be no good to you at all. So there's a carburetor, all fully functioning, apart from the simple fact it's not running as it should do. And, and I know it's not, I say it's just say just firing. So let's get over to the bench, have a look at it and see what we can't find. Right, I've got my Brucey tray up there. It's my mate Bruce Pinder, he uses one of these. And uh, I copied it off of him. But absolutely brilliant just for uh, doing carburetor as the old baking tray. So if you've got an old baking tray at home that your, your missus is gonna throw out, then uh, commandeer it and say I can make use of that for another 15 years. So they're brilliant. So I'll lay a bit of blue, blue roll or a rag in the bottom of mine, because I like to see what's inside this carburetor. And now what I do is just uncrack these, these two screws, one there and one there, like so. Now what I do before I do anything else, is I make a mark where it joins. I always forget which way around it goes. So I literally just make a score mark, coming down, coming down, on one side only. That way, you've got no disillusion as to where this carburetor lines up, okay? And then you made a flat, flat-headed screwdriver. Let's go and grab one. It doesn't smell very nice in here. It smells a little bit, um, a little bit stale. Remove the pin. That removes the float. And it also removes the, uh, the needle as well. Keep that on one side. And then what I do with a pair of long nose pliers, get hold of this main jet assembly and gently, gently pull that out. That was quite dirty in there to be fair. That comes apart. And that's pretty much all you can take out of these carburetors. You can take this out as well. This little piece, take him out. And then on this side here, with your long nose pliers, gently, gently, it's all plastic, remember? Remove that. Oh, it's housing as well. It will come, just take your time with it. If you snap it, game over, to be over. That comes out, you've got a little tiny, um, little tiny valve in there, or jet. A little tiny jet in here, which looks a bit plugged, to be fair, and full of stuff and uh, all of that. So what I'm going to use, I use carburetor, uh, carburetor um, WD-40 spray, as always. You definitely don't want to be using carburetor spray on these. Now we're over here in the UK, so there are other types of stuff you can get over in the UK as well as in the US as to uh, what you can clean with. I think PB Blaster you can use, I have heard, but we don't get it over here. So it's a question of literally just running through everywhere you can with WD-40 is what I use. All the jets, all the holes, all the orifices, get in there, have a clean up, best you can. And then with your files, which I'll show you in a minute, um, re-rim out that main jet. This one in here especially, that's the culprit, that one. And then there's one here to do as well, which is very, very small. I like to try and rim that one out. That's the one I find have, has problems with. Once I've done that, I'm gonna move on to the carburetor and uh, start to clean out the carburetor itself. Um, couple of holes to do. There's one right down the back inside here, little tiny brass one right inside here. Get right down in there. Clean that one out and get it in the straw to go inside there. There it goes, see it running out. One there to do as well. So a big lump of stuff, see that here, look, just come out. A big lump of stuff. And that's why I like to use a kitchen roll. Because you can see what actually comes out. So it gets a nice big bath on the WD-40, and then I'm just gonna air compress this off. Now, as I say, and keep saying, I don't have very good success with these. I, I'm not a fan of a carburetor, for what it is, and I have sort of gone by the inclination, anything over four years old, just replace it. But to try and save money, I'm gonna try and uh, get this carburetor to run to a degree. Okay, 
Okay, that's that done. That's about as clean as I'm going to get that. I'm not going to get that much cleaner. I'll go down into there, be nice. And then down to that one there. Now you would have thought the amount of solution I'm pushing through this, that this little carburetor would, would, would run, wouldn't you? You would like to think that, but... Trust me, they're hideous. New bit of rag on the side, and we want to keep everything as we can, nice and clean. I want to get my my files that you've all seen me use before, and get the smallest one, which I think is that one there. And we're going to rim out this jet here, best that we can. Double in size. Well, I haven't actually taken anything off of that. Literally, just have just cleaned it. And now we've got a lovely big hole in there. Now, can you see that beautiful big hole? I mean, this one here is a troublesome one. One with a little O-ring on it. We've got to clean what would be the, the tube, the emulsion tube, which is a built-in. So yeah, just take your time, clean the tube out, reopen up them holes, that was plugged that one, so we want the top as well I think, no, get your squirt and run that all the way down. best you can then block your tube up and then try and get that stuff to come back through that main jet see it down here trying to come through no, that's not running as well as we would like so back in with this small small file this is the small size I've got hopefully it'll be small enough put that in there it goes. Just take a hair's breath off of that where we can. Just try and clean that jet, that jet back up. You can get some little tiny drill bits that um, you can just rim this out ever so slightly. I don't have a pair of them. But it's just starting to go in there now. There it goes. Just by encouraging that in, will allow that jet to run. There you go, see it coming up the tube now? Bring a decent fit on it. There you go, see that? So that tells me that's now clean, because it's running. Try and get rid of all the muck that's on here. Something just said, I don't quite like what's that there, that's it. Another one here to do. Give that a clean and rim that one out. And the good thing we're using WD 40 is you don't get none of that gasket expansion. through the main jet. Okay, that's done. So what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna put this over to the air compressor and compress all that off. The float will be absolutely fine. Just make sure that that float is not actually cracked and um, it will it will float. You can also then just give the bottom of a carburetor bowl a little tiny swill out. 
No, you can do anything else with that. Wipe it out of a rag, maybe it'll be about, about your lot. But there's nothing you can do with that. That can give a little tiny clean off. There's an air breather. There it goes, that's running. And then your O-rings. Little birthday. I'm just cleaning as I go, you see, put it over onto, onto a sterile surface surface. Like that's now all done, and as you can see, big I don't think that was in there, but all these little bits, they were all in there. You don't want a little tiny grain of sand, and uh that'll uh that'll ruin your day. So onto the air compressor. Um, I'll compress it all out, be very careful of needle seats and what have you, and um once I've done that, I'll put it back together and then we'll come back to the machine and fit it back onto the machine. Okay, so uh, carburetor's now been cleaned, not put it on yet. Um, just want to see what this fuel looks like. So just want to crack this clamp off. I have put some fresh fuel in here. Um, just have a little look, see what it's doing. Getting plenty of flow. Yeah, there's some bits in there. But let's have that out. Let's have that all the way out. I don't think I put a lot, a lot of fuel in there, do I? Nearly empty. Let's have it all out. There's a bit of muck in there. There should be a screen in the bottom of the tank as well on these. So I'll take this fuel out. It is a little bit yellowish in colour. Uh, some of it is mine and some of it is what was uh, remnants of stuff in the bottom of the tank. But uh, we'll take that out anyway. Near enough there. And then I just want to fit this carburetor back to back to the old uh, machine. Am I a big enough pot for this or is it going to overflow the fuel? Come on. That's there. So let's take all that fuel out and let's get let's just get rid of that for a minute. Loads of bits and pieces in there. Bits and bobs. Okay, now we're going to fit the carburetor back on. And it's simply done. Uh, goes up that way. Uh, make sure your O-rings are in the back of here and that goes onto the intake and then you sort of just want to get your throttle control, tip your carburetor into position. This little tiny pipe goes through and now's a good time to try and fit your um, fuel line on at the same time. It just saves a bit of mucking about later on. So put your fuel pipe on, which has now gone on, and then with a bit of, bit of manoeuvrability, you can now slide your carburetor onto the intake, which is now gone into position. You're gonna take your fuel clamp hose off and with a pair of uh, normal pliers, put your fuel hose back on. That's all in. That could possibly do with going on to touch more to be fair. Let me get my long nose pliers because they've got less less teeth on or damage the fuel line. That's it. Let's put that on. So that goes on there. Uh, happy with that. So that's all good. Uh, governor arms all working on the throttle, which is what we'd like to see. So that's now all fitted. Um, I can now fit this um, airbox breather back on, put onto a crankcase breather at the back, this little pipe at the back here. Just fit that loosey goosey to begin with and then just offer that onto there. Now, there's four bolts to choose from that you've got to put in. Very simple to remember. The coarse threads um, go into the uh, plastic and the metal and the, uh, the fine threads go into the metal, okay? That's how I always remember it. So we do the plastic ones first, so that's the side socket I've already got on. If you're not quite sure, just take it off, have a little look behind, and it's the one that goes on the carburetor, one at the bottom, one at the top of the carburetor there. So the other two you're after, which would be these two just here. They, they're your, your plastic ones, okay? Which are, which are a course of threads. So put your, your breather pipe back on again, off your carburetor into position, and then put your course of threads either side of a carburetor. One there, and then one just down below. And that's a seven mil. That's a massively tight. And then change to an 8mm and put your finer threads into a metal one. One there, 
the one up here. Now that fuel that I just took out, what we're going to do with that, we're going to use that to clean the old uh, air filter. So I have no spare. And then get me the, uh, the old air filter. And then all we're going to do is just submerge that in the petrol. And that'll take the oil off. And then give it a clean. It will expand slightly. But if as long as you are quite quick with this, you just give it a good rinse out, good clean, and get a rag. Which I have on to hand. And then squeeze it into the rag to get rid of all that all that stuff. You can hang this up on Mrs. P's washing line, she'll love you for it. Give that a clean. Now all this does is just, just it just traps grass, right? That's all it does. It doesn't do anything else other than that. So it's not a, it's not essential essential. But see how it's expanded slightly, but it will go back in. Okay. So nothing to be too overly concerned about. And then that just wants a bit of a clean off and then wants fitting back onto the machine, which I do now. And literally all it does is just folds into there and folds up and clips onto there. So let me get it done and I'll come back. Right, I've turned the machine round. Um, it's had a bit of a clean up, nothing, nothing too essential. I haven't even tried to fire this yet. So I want to check the oil first, what the oil is doing. Um, see if it's a bit low or overfilled or whatever. Because um, uh, generally people would tend to panic when their machine don't start and they, they just <laughs> try and do anything to get it running, you know. So let's have a little look. This is, hasn't been fired at all, this machine. Let's give it a wipe off, see what we got. So it should go up to the, up to that second that second um, hole on the dipstick. Let's put that in. See what we got. Wow. Okay, so the oil is actually should be here at my nail, and it's actually down here. So that's massive. That's massively overfilled. So that's not going to help. The oil looks really, really good. I don't know what year this machine is. What year is it? 2016. So we're going to put my trusty oil extraction pump in and we're going to extract some oil out of this machine. It's going to take a little while to get it right because I have to keep taking the, uh, taking the pipe out to make sure I don't, uh, I don't take too much oil out. That drains through and I'll check it periodically just to make sure we're at the right level. When we're at the right level, I'll, uh, I'll come back to you. Okay, I think we're near, near enough there. It took quite a lot of oil out of here. I reckon there's about a litre of oil in here, give or take. Um, and it's just a little bit overfilled now. I might take just a little tiny smidgen out of it, but it is just above that above that hole, um, which is good enough for me. Um, I should run it because uh, it's not been running for a little while. I want to see how we uh, have it all level drops a bit later on. So it's had the plug cleaned up. Um, I'll put that back in because I have no spares. I've cleaned the air filter. Carburetor has been cleaned. All has been done. Before I do the blade, just want to double check that this is actually going to run because uh, it wasn't running earlier. The blade is, yeah, the blade needs a tiffle up as well. I'm not sure if the drive yet runs on this, we'll have to see. Um, but we'll take it outside, give it a run, see what happens, and then um, hopefully it'll uh, start up and uh, do what it should do. If it does, then uh, we bring it back in and uh, go from there. But if it doesn't, then it'll be a new carburetor. I don't tend to muck about with these too much. Um, I just I don't have such a good uh, success rate on these old style, um, on these new style carbs, they're a bit of a pain. Right, here it is. Um... I haven't started up yet, haven't even primed it or nothing. Put some juice in it, that's about as much as I've done. Let's see if it now run. Um, I've got my suspicion it's gonna hunt, but uh, we should wait and see. It runs a bit smoky, wants a good run, but what I'm gonna do before I get it too hot, I'm gonna get it back indoors because um, the back drive wasn't working, so it's gonna be tipped up and have the belt looked at. I'm suspecting either the gearbox is gone or the belt's come off one or the other. Um, that's got to be done, and then a blade sharp and balanced, so back indoors. Okay, I've had to put the breaker bar on this because um, 
it was right up there. My my little D Walt doesn't have the strength to take it off. I need to up, upgrade to a bigger bigger D Walt. I think a bigger gun. I used to take them off, but it's been used quite a bit. So spark plug HT is out. I've loosened it with the old breaker bar. They can now come off. Get rid of my club. Uh, the blade, it's not too shabby, but it does want a new edge put on it. So that's okay. Um, we want to try and now remove um, this cover um, just so I can get to, um, to see what the uh, the blade at uh, the belt is doing. I'm suspecting the blade is either off or the gearbox is gone. If the gearbox is gone, then it'd be um, it'd be uh, either converted into a push mower or try and find a donor gearbox from somewhere. But I'm hoping the uh, it's just the blades come off. And just by pulling this down. Right, so we've got the uh, the blade off as described. Riley Boy's been over his Auntie Shell's house in a paddling pool for two hours, so he's been enjoying himself. Um, I've just converted, uh, there's two screws here, that's what I do with these, I don't muck about. These little tiny screws here that um, hold these guards in, I just convert them into flatheads, just put a grinder across them. Convert them into flatheads, um, so it's easy to take them off. Um, and then there's a 10 mil up in here to be removed. And then that should then give you your guard. Now I'm hoping that the belt is actually off. Uh, and it's not. So that's a shame. Hopefully it's off the back end. Is that boss gonna come off or not? Let me see if I can get this round first enough just so I can see on the back pulley. Oh without breaking it. Come on. And uh let's have a look. No, it's on the back pulley. I can feel so the drive is either not working or the cable needs adjusting is my is my surmise which is a shame because uh, this would have gone for good money had it been a drive mower Okay, yeah, the drive is not working, so that tells me the gearbox is actually gone on this machine. So what I should do is I should just let it run now, um, give it 15 minutes just to let me sure it doesn't hunt and muck about. And all I should do is I should take the cable off of the drive, remove the drive handle, and remove the um, gears on the um, on the gearbox axle, and then it become a push mower. A reduction in price when you go to sell it, but it's still quite a tight little machine despite a little bit of rust and uh, should do someone quite a good turn. Okay, so there you go, you can't win them all. Um, the drive of that machine does not work, the gearbox has actually failed, and they do happen quite a lot on those little quo-cast machines. Mass produced um, with cheap parts, so it's all we can hold it, I'm afraid. So that machine now come back in, it's on its test now, running in the background, and it's uh, not missing a beat, it's running super, super fine. I'll convert it into a push mower and just take a reduction on the price, it's what it's worth, because a new gearbox for one of those is around about 20 to 30 pounds, and it's not just not worth doing. I don't have no spare ones in to take it off, so that's what it is. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Mixed Mowers. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Show your appreciation towards the channel. Subscribe to the channel as well. I look forward to seeing the next episode of Mixed Mowers very, very soon. But until then, people, don't forget, more importantly, take it easy.